Ontario judge has ruled against famed internet psychologist Jordan Peterson and upheld that he must attend social media training mandated by his employer, the College of Psychologists of Ontario. Now, according to reporting in CBC News, the college ordered Peterson to undergo a coaching program on professionalism in public statements. After receiving multiple complaints regarding his online rhetoric about women, gay people, and transgender people, and other political subjects. Meanwhile, new reporting into the identity of the man accused of shooting and killing a California store owner over her pride flag reveals 27-year-old Travis Ikaguchi frequently made anti-gay social media postings. Per reporting in Vice, Ikaguchi also, quote, followed and boosted Jordan Peterson and Robert F. Kennedy Jr. and the, quote, right-wing satirical website, The Babylon Bee. All right. Uh, do you want to get into the Jordan Peterson part of this first? Sure. Um yeah, look, I find this very concerning. Obviously, Canada is a place without a First Amendment, so his um, provocative political statements don't have the same degree of protection as they do here. Well, wait a minute. This is a professional. This is a professional organization, right. and talking about how he can operate in an employment context. Is this not an argument that employers? can set professional standards for their employees in terms of public media? I mean, this is a, it's a quasi-public-private thing because it's a licensing board. It's government-regulated. It, the college is a public college. So it's to me, it's not, right, I would agree that your, your employer doesn't have to employ you. And if they don't like your social media presence, they can correct it. But can a professional, regulated licensing board take away your ability to make political statements and also keep your job? I don't think so. Yes, I mean, I don't they think can. It I, don't, I don't think it's Wait, true. they can and they do all the time. Yeah. I, people get disbarred for all kinds of reasons all the time. Right. People, people shouldn't be disbarred for saying, uh, for expressing viewpoints that clash with the liberal establishment would be Well, that's a, a lot of yada, yada, yada hand waving away what he's actually said. I don't think that Jordan Peterson has existed as a controversial political figure for, what, like a decade now? I don't think he's being, since, like, he's being... Um, uh, made to take these classes because he said, I like conservatives, or me personally, I don't like, I, I don't think that people should transition, or I don't think um, having, uh, being trans is a real thing. Those are statements that a lot, you know, people agree with and can make. It's been after many years of this kind of behavior, a kind of an escalation, and I think many people have had issues. For example, just over the weekend, he got into some hot water over a tweet where he responded to Mehdi Hassan uh, doing a monologue about the horrific Jacksonville murder where a self-described racist with a swastika on his gun targeted and mowed down and murdered three black people, including a 19-year-old kid. Um, he responded to Mehdi Hassan's monologue about how terrible that was, saying, uh, you're not really brown, more like a light tan, just like white people, plus you're a Caucasian by definition, buddy. So as part of his monologue, Mehdi made reference to the fact that he's a, he himself is brown and perhaps feels invested in anti-racism and people not running around shooting people because of the color of their skin. And Jordan Peterson makes this kind of a comment. Now, I think the question from a professional board is, do you want someone who is randomly going around in a very high profile way, making weird racial essentialist arguments about hosts of news programs? Is that, show, is that uh, diminishing the credibility of your organization? And professional boards have all kinds of ethics standards about not having relationships with clients, about not having drug use, things that are legal, but perhaps not allowed by the professional organization. And you can pick a bone with that, but acting like he's being targeted when people have been censored for wearing their hair certain ways and having all kinds of just uh, well, not we could unprofessional do a whole behavior about that being inappropriate as well, like this is, I, I, yes, I am, I am, I am objecting to this to a purely based on the things he tweets. Um, attempt to punish or sanction him it has nothing to do with. He 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 notes in this um, column for. Um, the National Post that he doesn't you know, he doesn't practice any like he doesn't take clients on anymore because his national profile is too great like it's not people people are not bringing an issue before the board that they were in a counseling session with him and and, and he has unethical behavior based on anything. But it, it, but it doesn't have to be. There was actually a case, I wish I could pull it up, I was struggling to find it just now. Um, there was a psychologist here in the United States who took to Twitter and was weighing in on some of these kind of pop culture Twitter viral mm -hmm. moments. I think it had to do with the relationship dispute between people. And she took the side, I think, of the woman very 
strongly in a way that people argue, given that I think she was a couples counselor, a relationship counselor of some kind, diminished her potential client's ability to see her as a fair actor. And she was um, rebuked for that from the professional organization because there are these standards about how you can behave on social media because you are a mental health practitioner for for perfectly good professional reasons. There are these standards, but that doesn't mean they're being enforced in any logical way or that they are themselves a good thing. I think of well, California trying to, being... what's the evidence that he's harmed any of his clients? That's not the question. You're, I'm that not, should be the question. No, the argument here is that he is being targeted. So you have to provide evidence of targeting and not that, that this is, this, in They're the making course, him submit to social media re-education right. training. But who else has done that? What other cases well, exist? Some, How does this okay, distinguish well, him from everybody well, else who's been censored this all year? B, maybe those cases are BS too. That doesn't mean this is... Maybe, but like, you guys, you got to make an argument. You can't just say... The argument is that he should not be subjected to this. Okay, then you're arguing against the existence of professional guidelines in, psychi in the psychiatric practices in Canada. That, that's insane. I'm sorry, that's not a that's not a real thing. I can sit here all day and say, well, I prefer that my job didn't have any dress code. I could I could I prefer a lot of things. I prefer that I have a four day week. I prefer a lot of things that aren't the requirements of a job. And maybe I should advocate for those. I, I very much support a four day work week and think that people should be advocating and unionizing and trying to get changes to those things. And if Jordan Peterson wants to link up with other psychologists or psychiatrists who feel like the professional rules of that organization are outdated and need to be changed and updated in the world of social media, I think that's a legitimate cause. But if people are going to make the case that the right is being attacked and targeted in this way, which might be true, they have to make the case and show how he is being treated differently or unfairly under guidelines that broadly I'm saying apply. he's being treated differently. I'm saying he should not be subjected to this for merely tweeting his views in the same way that California tried to have that law to, um, to again, not criminalize because you would just be stripped as your post as a doctor for you know sharing medical misinformation and this bill was a disaster and even like the ACLU spoke out against it, even though it would just be in the context of right, a, a like the the licensing board association type thing, but of course that is a you know strictly regulated government quasi-public entity that does that. It was a bad bill and it was opposed by the ACLU on free speech grounds. That's similarly how I feel about this. Yeah. What do you make substantively of his choice to argue that, I, I was having trouble making sense of what his argument was to Mehdi Hassan, because it seems to me that even if you thought Mehdi was white, which just for the sake of argument, even if you agreed with Jordan Peterson that Mehdi was white, I'm, I'm curious what bearing that has on his ability to make an argument about uh, 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 anti-black shooter, uh, anti-Semitic shooter. I have no idea what he was bad. trying to say, but I despise Mehdi Hassan, so I don't. Care. All right. Well, I certainly don't feel that way about Mehdi Hassan. That's a very strong word to use about someone. Um, uh, but I, I, I certainly wouldn't even use that word about Jordan Peterson. I'm just really what confused. Word? What are we talking despised. About? Oh, I would um, certainly use that. It, it does seem like for a lot of these professional organizations, like the law, like psychology. There is a credibility issue in your relationship with your client. And there are risks in being too open about your personal beliefs, not because it's like bad to have certain personal beliefs, but whatever your beliefs are one way or the other, it could affect your therapeutic relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and that's why there is this usually a social like a clinically accepted line between what the therapist reveals about themselves and their lives and what you obviously sure. bring to the table in therapy. And I do think that you know, he, you know, well, he, he, doesn't that, want to he, well, he does anymore. accept that because he said he stopped seeing clients for exactly that reason. Right. But that's the thing. Like, well, if you stop seeing clients, then why, why the need to hold on to your license if you're not maintaining the professional obligations of someone that has a, that someone that has the license and uses the license for clinical treatment should have. I, I have not kept up my bar license because I don't care. I never want to be a lawyer again. And so you can't get me on any of these, but he seems to have some like attachment to it. He says he worked what hard. They, what did they, they, say, what they had say had you it. have on professional well, social I, media I, presence. I haven't paid a dues in a million years. I, like well, I'm not be, in the it organization. Be, it would be BS, though. Right, but it doesn't matter to me. I'm not. Well, I, I can't. I don't have any investment in an organization I'm not a part of. Having thoughts and feelings about my behavior, they have no actual power. It's a professional organization, and the power only exists if you want to take advantage of the resources that you get from being in the organization. And it seems like Jordan Peterson wants to have it both ways. If you want to belong to a professional organization, sometimes there are rules. If you want to join the golf club, you got to wear slacks and whatever the dress code All right, is. But it's not just it's not just an informal club that has no government structure. Or no, it's, religion. Profe it's a professional right. organization. Right. It's a licensing organization, and there's requirements for a regulated. license. Is it okay? Well, next thing you know, it's going to be a free speech violation that they won't let me be a lawyer if I don't pass the bar. <laughs>
It's just a club. <laughs> right, the club uh, requires closed-toed shoes. No, that's not a free speech violation. I don't care about that. Fine. All right. Uh, what's, what's the second part of the story? Uh, the oh, the, uh, the the killer. The uh, the uh, the attack in the. Um, oh right. We should touch on that since we mentioned it in the opening. Look again. I, I mean, I keep saying the same thing when we talk about all these horrific and again not particularly representative um, violent episodes that do seem to involve um, actual political maliciousness that is not representative of crime in general but is always a national news story when you know people are killed for what are more mundane reasons I guess so it makes it's not news as much but I, I, okay you take is this matters to you that this person liked Jordan Peterson or uh, or RFK jr or whoever else? You know, run with that, I guess. You can say that conservatives run with it if the person they like is some liberal or leftist person, I guess. Well, I just I, don't see where I'm this gets us, and I don't care. Blame, I think but it's going important. forward, if, if I knew that there were people who were following me in my show who took my, let's say, strident criticism of the Democratic Party as evidence that they should do some physical harm to Democrats, I would make sure in the wake of that horrific incident to be clear that this is not a fight that's being fought on an individual level. This is not a war and that human lives are valuable. And that as much as I criticize people's policies, you absolutely should never do any harm or disrespect people's fundamental humanity by taking away their lives. And I in no way endorse that kind of behavior. And regrettably, we never see those kinds of statements from people like Jordan Peterson or Tim Pool in the wake of these tragedies. They simply say, it wasn't my fault. And that's their choice. Mm. All right, we will have more rising right after this.